Hey folks, Nathan with Access RV Parts and Service Department back with you once again. Today, we are going to be discussing the electrical system on your RV, both the battery side, the 110 volt side, what all that stuff means. If you don't quite understand things or you've been looking for, how does the electrical system on my RV work? Look no further, this is the place. I wanna remind you, go ahead and like and subscribe so that we can keep bringing you this content. So let's go ahead and jump right into it, shall we? Okay, the number one tip that I wanna give you RV owners out there is right here. Fuses. You need to make sure you have spare fuses on hand at all times. Here's an eight pack, it's got eight different sizes in it. it sells for under $20. Every RV owner should know where the fuses are at in their RV and they should carry that style of fuse with them at all times. You never know when a fuse is gonna blow and you might need to replace it. So find out the type of fuse that you have and go get fuses for your RV. That's the number one tip I can give you. Okay, another tip for you RV owners, and this has to do with the entire electrical system. You need to own one of these. It's called a volt ohm meter or it's called a multimeter, and you need to learn how to use it. Lots of videos on YouTube on how to use these things. Lots of information available on the internet. The important thing when you're buying one of these, and they're usually $20 or less, there's three features you need to make sure it has. That it checks 120 volt alternating current, direct current, and a measurement of resistance, which is called ohms. So make sure your multimeter does those three features, but every RV owner should have one of these on hand at all time. Take it camping with you, prevent those problems from happening in the future. Okay, here's a couple gadgets that we use in the service department at Access RV. Technicians will have these in their toolbox. You may not have to have these, but they're kind of cool little gadgets. The first one is an outlet tester. It's got a series of lights in it. You simply plug this into an outlet and it tells you if you've got correct polarity, maybe you've got a, an open ground, those sorts of things. Maybe not something that every RV owner has. Um, and as a matter of fact, if you have a multimeter, you can do the same thing. This is just a quicker way for our technicians to go through every outlet in an RV to see if the uh, polarity is correct before we send it on down the road. Next is uh, you may want to check the voltage in your RVs. You want to make sure that the 110 volt side has good voltage. Uh, this is a little analog meter that I've had for years and years. Plugs into a receptacle. There's a little bar that goes up and down that tells you where your voltage is at. Now again, you can accomplish the same thing by owning a multimeter, which we've talked about in other parts of this video. This is a voltage tester for the 12 volt side. Plugs into a cigarette style lighter plug and right here it gives you the readout for what your voltage is at. This one's nice, it gives a little digital image on where your voltage is at. Now, when you start to drop maybe below 11 and a half volts, you know your batteries are starting to get low and it's time to get them recharged. The next little tool that we use doesn't have anything to do with the RV, it actually has to do with your truck. So if you're a fifth wheeler or a camper hauler or a travel trailer hauler, you may want to consider getting one of these little deals. Now how this works is this plugs into the seven way on your truck and there's a series of lights that light up and it will tell you if you've got your turn signals, if you've got your brake lights, if your brake controller is working, your backup lights, etc. Uh, we use this all the time in the service department to help identify when we have a wiring problem, if the problem is on the truck, which this helps us with, or if it's on the trailer. So if you plug this into your truck and all the lights work when you turn on your signals and hit your brakes, those sorts of things, then you know the problems with your trailer. You can start looking for things like light bulbs, fuses, um, shorts in the system, those sorts of things. So another nice tool that we use in the service department all the time. Okay, question we get all the time about RVs. Is my RV 120 volt or is it 240 volt? Well, if the plug on the end of your RV looks like this, it has three prongs, that's a 120 volt system rated at 30 amps of current, but it's 120 volts. You can actually see right down here on the inlet to the RV, it clearly says 110 to 125 volts. So do not plug this into the dryer receptacle at your house that is usually wired 240 volts. You're gonna have a very bad day. That makes a lot of things inside the RV uh, go bad. Microwaves, converters, lots of things. So make sure if you're going to put this receptacle at your house, you talk to your electrician and they are going to put in an RV receptacle for you so they wire it 120 volts. Hope that helps. So now we've come inside the RV and we're taking a look at the power center. Most RVs have something that look very similar to this, but you might not know what it is. 
there's usually a little flip down hatch that shows you both the breakers, which are on the 120 volt alternating current side of the system, as well as the fuses, which are on the 12 volt direct current side of the system. Also, this is where your batteries get charged from. The incoming 120 volt alternating current runs through the main breaker, this big 30 amp breaker here, and then gets divided a, bunch, a whole bunch of different circuits. One of those circuits is dedicated to the converter. A converter takes 120 volt alternating current and turns it into 12 volt direct current. It charges your battery and powers all of these different circuits. Just like the alternating current side, there's a main fuse. In this instance, there's two fuses dedicated for the converter side of the system. And then each one of these fuses is its own circuit. So as you can see, we've got 40 amp, we've got 15 amp, your RV might have 10 amp. You're gonna wanna carry a variety of fuses. So in case one of these blows, you can keep yourself on the road by changing it. Your RV has two distinct electrical systems, a 120 volt alternating current system and a 12 volt direct current system, which is what your RV batteries are for. We get a phone call in the RV service department all the time that asks, what runs off 120 volt and run, what runs off 12 volt? Well, that's a good question. Let me answer some of that. The things that run off 120 volt are your air conditioner, your microwave, fireplaces, the electric heating element on your appliances such as your water heater and refrigerator, your converter that converts 120 volt alternating current to 12 volt direct current, all of the receptacles in your RV, television sets and other multimedia devices like DVD players. Now the items that run off 12 volt are things like your lights, your water pump, if your RV is equipped with USB ports, appliances require 12 volts like refrigerator, furnace, and water heaters, as well as the detectors in your RV like smoke, propane, and carbon monoxide detectors, as well as the ventilation fans in your system. I hope this helps clear up what sort of things run off the 120 volt and what stuff runs off of the 12 volt side of the system. Thanks for sticking with us today. I hope you've learned a couple of things about your electrical system, how it works, and maybe how to better enjoy your camping experience when you're out there. As always, I wanna remind you, like and subscribe this video so that we can keep making this content for you. Stay with us because next week we're gonna be talking about the plumbing system on your RV. We'll see you again soon.